Ah, the mighty Longhorn. So majestic. So delicious. Sounds like a lot of hoopla. And not to mention, you can store some serious data in these babies. That's right. In the last video, we went over setting up our Kubernetes cluster on a nuke with K3S. And in this video, we're using Longhorn to take care of persistent data storage. Strap in for a delicious episode this week on PageKey. Thankfully, K3S seems to have made the problem of persistent storage very easy to fix for us. First of all, it ships with its own local storage provider. So we don't necessarily need Longhorn. We can apply these and get local storage bound to our node, no problem. But in this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and go for Longhorn because it's a little more sophisticated, has its own UI, all that stuff. So it seems like we just need to apply this one YAML file. So let's try it out. Wow, okay, everything's created. Let's check on the deployment. It's pulling the images now. I'll give it a few minutes. Okay, now that everything is running, let's try it out. I'll create these two files, pvc.yaml, pod.yaml. And if we check persistent volumes, uh, there are none. We apply our persistent volume claim YAML and our pod YAML. There is a bound Longhorn volume now, and we have one pod. It's pulling, but we'll test it out in one second and show the power of persistent volumes. Okay, it's all set, so let's get into this pod by doing kubectl exec dash it volume test bash, not bash, sh works for this particular image that they used. And what do we have here? Well, it says slash data should be our persistent volume and it looks good. So it's empty except for lost and found. Let's touch a file in there. Keep me forever. Let's also touch a file outside of the persistent volume claim. I will be lost. So we see the file I will be lost at the root level here that can be anywhere on the file system. And then we have our persistent volume with keep me forever. Let's exit out and I will cube control delete the pod. Get pod shows that there's nothing there and I will recreate the pod. So the pod is back, it's creating, and it's finally running. So we can rerun our exec command. We're in the pod. At the top level, nothing is there. So we lost that one file. Let's check the data volume. And there it is. Our file is still there. So the point here is you can delete the pod and it's no big deal if you had stuff in your persistent volume claim because it will be kept for the next time. It's stored elsewhere and then whoever wants to mount this persistent volume, not e it doesn't even have to be this pod, it can be other pods that can share data in that way. It's great. And then everything else in the pod, as you know, is ephemeral, so it's lost. But in this case, we can have persistence between deployments, between pods, so it's pretty exciting. So since we switched to Longhorn instead of the built-in local storage provider with K3S, we can try to access the UI. We have a lot more power and control with Longhorn. Let's see how this is done. So we'll do cube control, get service in the Longhorn system, namespace, and it says to find the cluster IP for the front end and put it right into your browser. However, that doesn't quite work. We're gonna have to make a change, open up a node port for this guy so that we can access it from our computer, which remember this is running on a nuke completely separate from our laptop. So that's not gonna work for us. Let's figure out how to do that. So what we can do is check the services that we have available. We wanna edit the Longhorn front end service. So we'll do cube control edit service in the namespace Longhorn system, Longhorn front end. This is the actual YAML that is live in the system right now. So making live updates is a little messy, but we can do this in order to access the UI. So we'll change the type to node port and we'll add an additional field here called node port. So the internal port's 80, we're gonna expose it on 30,080 and we can save this file. Seems to have taken the edits, no errors. So we can get the services and we see that Longhorn front end has changed to a node port type with 30080 exposed. Let's try to access it. So it seems to have worked like a charm. I put in my public address. It's uh, in my hosts file at this point for the nuke colon 30080 and I get the Longhorn dashboard. Additionally, you can just type in the IP address colon 30080, right? So if it's 10.0.0.184 for your machine, do that 30080, enter and we have access to the Longhorn UI and we can see exactly what's going on. When did we create these volumes? How many volumes do we have? Are they okay? Well, they're degraded, that's not good. How much storage do we have left? 
Interesting. I wonder why this is degraded. Ah, it didn't schedule a replica. I wonder if that's because I only have one node, so it's a little unsafe. Either way, you get the idea. You can configure this very easily through this UI. It's much easier than doing it all through the command line. So that's it. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you got a lot out of it. Please subscribe and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks.